Good evening and welcome to this live webcast of Majesty Christian Television Network. My name is Apostle Larry Dakano. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we give you praise and glory for this opportunity. We thank you for your word which is about to come to us. We pray that you would minister life to us as your word comes. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the opportunity. Be glorified forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, webcast. And uh, it's my prayer that the Lord will touch your life through what we're going to share, share on. Now, I've been speaking on the topic of the kingdom of heaven. And that's the theme I've chosen for, for this month, the month of November. Uh, the kingdom of heaven. Or you may give, you may call it the kingdom is here. You may title it that way if you choose. But basically, what I want to look at or delve into is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The two terms are used interchangeably. Now, Jesus spoke a lot about the kingdom, and uh, and so some may wonder. Was it Jesus who first began to speak about this subject? As a matter of fact, it had been prophesied or foretold long before the time of Jesus. Jesus was only, uh, he came to manifest or declare the beginning of that kingdom. As a matter of fact, in the Gospels, when the baby Jesus was born, the Bible said the wise men saw a star in the east. We told them that a king had been born. And he was to be uh, the ruler of the world and the ruler of God's people. Now, there's something very interesting about uh, the kingdom of heaven. And I want to take us to the book of Daniel so we can see the roots and the connections uh, uh, or the sources from the Old Testament. Now, why I'm looking at this is for us to be able to put things in perspective and to and to be aware of the times we're living in, in and then to be aware of the requirements of the times upon us. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to read from Daniel, book of Daniel chapter 2. And... Uh, from the verse 31, I'm going to read, but up to this time, if you know, the king, king Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had a dream, a certain dream, and he required of his magicians and astrologers to, to interpret the dream. As a matter of fact, he not only required of them to interpret the dream, he wanted them to tell him the content of the dream, and after that, interpret it. In fact, the magicians protested and said, well, it's not possible for anybody to, um, you know, to, 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 to reveal a dream which he or she had not had and be able to interpret it. So they pled with the king to give them the contents of the dream and then they would be able to interpret it. But the king was so furious and threatened to kill all of them, all of the wise men, the magicians and, uh, and the soothsayers. And so they began to panic. So eventually the news got to Daniel, who was one of the uh, Hebrew boys who was taken away uh, into, into captivity, together with a whole lot of others. But they had been specially chosen to be raised uh, for service in the king's palace. And so uh, the news came to Daniel and his other friends that the king had uh, purposed to kill all of them, all the wise men, including the Hebrew boys, because they could not relate the dream the king had had and also give the interpretation. So Daniel, if you probably are familiar with the story, he, he, he pled with the king to give them some time and that his intention was to go seek God in prayer and to ask God to reveal to them the mystery of the dream and his interpretation. Now, this tells us that God is a revealer of hidden mysteries. And so, 
If there's anything that is puzzling your life, if there's anything that is bothering you, if there's something you do not understand, a mystery about your life, I believe God is the right source to go to, to seek clarification, to seek interpretation. Hallelujah. And so we are at a point where uh, Daniel had had gone. In fact, in the night he's, he pled with God to reveal to him the dream and its meaning. And the Bible says God was gracious and God revealed the dream to him. And he also got the meaning to the dream. Now he went back to the king uh, to release or to relate the dream and its meaning. And that's where our uh, message begins right now. <clears throat> Now, the verse 31 of uh, Daniel chapter 2 says, You looked, O king, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and its feet partly of clay, and partly of baked. So let me take it again. And its feet of iron and clay. Let me take it. Its feet partly of clay and partly of baked clay. Beg your pardon for that. Verse 34. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not with human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were broken to pieces at the same time and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. Wow. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. What a what an incredible dream. And it makes you wonder what this could mean. In fact, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven has mysteries. And that's one of the things you've got to recognize about the kingdom of God. God chooses to um, deal with people who are not a part of the kingdom. He chooses to speak to them. He chooses to relate to them uh, in mysteries. In other words, he gives them a puzzle and leaves them wondering to figure out uh, trying to figure out what the mystery means and, and and god is doing that on purpose because that is like a coded language for those who belong to the kingdom and that's why he told his disciples unto you it is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom but to the others it will be related in parables and so if you are listening to me and you are um dealing with certain mysteries about your own life you uh, th things are not clear to you then probably you need to realign yourself well with the kingdom of god because even when god has given you a dream which may be a revelation a prophetic revelation god also by his spirit will give you the meaning of that dream but where the dream is unclear to you and you have no idea what the dream is about, for all you know, it may be speaking about your status in the kingdom of heaven. Your status as far as the kingdom matters are concerned. Is your heart united with the kingdom? Are you con truly connected with the kingdom of heaven? Because if God is speaking to you in parables and you have no idea what the parables mean, what the symbols mean, what what exactly the message is about, then you got to question a few things about your spiritual standing. The Bible says God speaks uh, the tongues, you know, the language uh, of the Holy Ghost or tongues for that matter, they are a sign to the unbeliever. But to us who are in the church, uh, they are meant to edify and to build us up. And that is why when we speak in tongues, there must be of necessity and interpretation so that whoever is hearing can also be edified. So here, God has given the, this hidden king a powerful dream. A dream of enormous proportions and magnitude. A dream which was going to impact generations way beyond himself. 
And here the man was puzzled. He could not understand what it meant. He knew there was a, a powerful message, but he didn't have any clue. But he sought to understand the meaning of the dream. Are you seeking to understand the meaning of puzzles and, and, and issues that are playing out in your life? Are you seeking to know if you seek the Lord, He will give you the meaning? Praise the Lord. Now, so this king eventually got Daniel to agree to interpret the dream. And let's see how Daniel interpreted it. Now, first of all, just to go over the dream, there was a huge statue. The head was of gold and the chest and arms were of silver. And then the belly to the thigh were made of uh, bronze. And then the, the legs... The legs were of iron. And then the feet were a mixture of iron and clay. And then the Bible continues to say that in the dream, a stone was cut without human hands. And that stone was held at the feet of that huge statue. And everything came crashing down. And in fact, it was also broken to pieces in one time. That and a mighty wind came and swept everything off. The stone which hit that statue and, and crushed or crumbled it, that stone became magnified and became a huge mountain which filled the whole earth. A very impressive and powerful dream. What is God saying with this dream? In fact, what God is saying about this dream affects you and I today. It is dangerous to live in this world without any perspective for the things of God or for the kingdom of God. In fact, anybody who does not enter the kingdom will be excluded. Because the kingdom which God has set up is a kingdom which requires us to make an effort to enter and to remain in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Jesus made a statement some time ago. He said that, he says, people were going to come from the east and the west. And they will enter in the king, into the kingdom. And whilst the children of the kingdom, those for whom it is meant, will be thrust out. It's a very serious statement. So it means that those who are who claim to be in the kingdom and they are not abiding by the principles and the tenets of the kingdom, they can lose their status. Hallelujah. Now, let's look further at the kingdom, uh, the, the meaning of the dream. Um, so Daniel now give the interpretation. He says, this is the dream. And now we will interpret it to the king. You, O king, are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands, he has placed mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of God. Now, it is interesting to notice that the concept of the kingdom has been there from the very beginning. In fact, we know that God himself who made the earth and made all humanity is a king. And therefore, if we are to be like him and we were made in his own image, the idea of a kingdom is God's idea in the first place. What we have today, we call it democracy, we call it all kinds of, all types of governments which we have, even the military ones. They are all not originally God's uh, recipe for rulership. These are all man-made systems of government. Are you hearing me? Now, so here we see that God gave Nebuchadnezzar a dream about a kingdom, about his own kingdom, which was the head of gold. And then he says further that um, in verse Verse 39, after you, another kingdom will arise inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Uh, finally, there will be a fourth kingdom as strong as iron. So, look at it. It's a finally, so, so, so the, those three stages, uh, the gold, the silver, and the bronze, and then the iron, that speaks of a fourth kingdom. These are four major kingdoms, all right? Now, the four, finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything, 
and as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet, it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. Verse 44, in the, mean, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven, pay attention to that, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to other people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but itself will endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true. And the interpretation is trustworthy. Wow. This is God's revelation for something that would unfold in history. As a matter of fact, it can be reliably said that we are in this era whereby the fourth kingdom has, has uh, taken place or let's say is in fulfillment of manifestation. The, the, of course, historically, it's been proven that it began with Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and then it went to uh, the head of uh, uh, the, the, the chest of silver and arms of silver, uh, the Medes and Persian, and then the Greek became the bronze, and now the, the Romans, they were represented by the iron, uh, iron uh, what do you call it, iron legs. And then the Roman Empire now broke into pieces. Hallelujah. And now we have a mixture of uh, kingdoms and also other types of government. And that's the clay we're talking about. So we have the strong government, powerful government, uh, 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 all of them coming out from the uh, you know, broken uh, uh, Roman government, a mixture with other weak sorts in the world today. So clearly, prophetically, we are in a season whereby the fourth government with God uh, had prophesied it was going to be on earth is where we, are, where we are right now. Which means that the state at which that, um, that rock, which was cut with that human hands, was held at the feet of that statue and it crumbled it. We are really, really at that stage. In fact, when Jesus became, when he came on the scene, the Bible says clearly that he began to preach. It says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, was it just a saying to get attention? No. He was announcing to everyone that a season had come wherein God was going to intervene in the affairs of men, whether we like it or not. And he was going to cast and, to, and he was going to bring to bring to nothing and will bring down and crumble that which um, mankind has set up over the years. Now, which means that human government and human institutions, human leadership, were all going to be brought down to nothing. Can you imagine? We take pride these days. In the democracy that we have built up, we take pride in human institutions and judicial systems and all kinds of things that we have built up and we take pride in. All that represents the history of humanity. Everything we have built up over the years. But the Bible is saying 
that there is coming a kingdom which was which is going to wipe out all of these things and god was going to set up his own government so i just want us to be aware that something is around the corner in fact it is so important that everyone pay attention because we are so close we are just at the door according to bible prophecy and according to the interpretations that we can the manifestations and the fulfillment of prophecy which we can see today are you hearing me now if jesus says and has be, was preaching and he sent even his disciples to preach the same thing to let people know that the kingdom of god is at hand that is clearly to tell us that this dramatic change of events this dramatic um, uh, turn around whereby god's regime was going to replace everything we have been doing all this while that regime was around the corner hallelujah and so it's not important for us to understand what this kingdom is about is it really among us is god's kingdom really really at work as it at play right now and that is these are the things we got to understand we got to know so that we know whether we are actually a part of the kingdom or outside of the kingdom we want to know how we are able to connect with the kingdom and to and to make sure that we are not excluded in fact the scriptures just say that from the time of john the baptist in fact this is in matthew chapter 11 verse 12 it says from the days of john the baptist until now this is jesus speaking the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force a better translation will be from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven is advancing forcefully and men of violence um, strive to enter in other words people who are ambitious and want to be connected and want to be a part of the kingdom they are aggressively joining the kingdom there are places on earth today when people hear the gospel they 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 crave they sacrifice everything in order to to be a part of it to be involved they are even ready to lose their lives but most of us today who received the, the gospel on a silver platter we treat it lightly that which is of the kingdom which has the power to change our lives and to give us a certain status before heaven some of us are treating lightly and are treating disrespectfully i cannot be believe and i cannot imagine that some people who even call themselves pastors and ministers cannot be honest one little bit it's so shameful that we cannot be truthful it's so disgusting that we cannot act in accordance with what we are preaching and these are some of the things you find about the kingdom i'm going to share some more things about certain traits and certain characteristics which you will find in the kingdom and you don't be surprised that it is that way hallelujah and jesus really taught us exhaustively about the kingdom of heaven and about the things which are happening today so that you and i wouldn't be surprised the kingdom of god has it is it yet to come or is already here the kingdom of heaven is it yet to happen or is already here i want to tell you it's already here we are actually inside the kingdom and you will be amazed to see some of the things which are playing out in the kingdom and you you will be surprised to find out that jesus already has told us what will be taking place I'm sure I've got you excited. I'm sure I've gotten you interested. I'm sure you want to know more about this very topic because it affects you. It concerns you. And it's important that you ascertain and you um, you make sure that you are well connected because that which will sweep away every system and every plan and every arrangement of men is around the corner a stone cut not with the hands of men that stone has been cut already that which you wipe away every human and every kind of arrangement and government 
is close by. But will you be rooted? Will you be stationed upon the rock? Or you'll be swept away like chaff by that strong wind which will blow everything away. Think carefully about these things. Hallelujah. I will be bringing you further um, aspects of this message and I'm sure you, you will love to hear. Make a date with me and uh, I will be back on this channel, God willing, next uh, on Sunday. And make a date with me at 7 o'clock. At the same time, I will be bringing a continuation to this special message. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you for the, for the privilege of bringing your word to your people. And my prayer is that they will take precaution and they will do everything they can to align themselves with the things that you are unfolding unto us. I pray that we shall not be thrust out of the kingdom, but we shall be included and we shall be every part of it. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for spending this time with me. And uh, my name is Apostle Larry Dorkenu. And if you want to reach me, my details are on the screen. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you and also to being with you again in the next broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.